past week, Tommy Sanders and I were in the Wind River Mountains in Wyoming, and it was an incredible trip. One of those trips I'm sure you all have had where you just can't quit thinking about it when you get home. One of the neatest aspects of the trip was that we took llamas in, and I had never been around llamas. I had actually never hiked as far as we hiked straight up a mountain, and by the end of the trip, the llamas were my friends, believe me. I want to show you a little bit more about taking a llama into the mountain, so I got together with my good friend Bob from Lander Llama. We called him the Sweatin' Swede, and he knew all about llamas. Howdy, I'm Bob Scholl with the Lander Llama Company, and I'm here with Hotshot today. Uh, Lander Llama Company is out of uh, Lander, Wyoming. We do uh, pack trips up in the Wind River Mountain Range, uh, exclusively with llamas. Llamas have a, a real low impact on the environment. They have a soft foot, um, a, almost a dog-like pad underneath two toenails. And uh, what it does doesn't cause very much impact on the trail. In fact, a study at the University of Montana showed that a fully loaded llama has as much impact on a trail as a backpacker does. Some other things is that they're browsers. They'll eat grass. I mean, they love grass, but they'll also eat the grouse wardle berry which is the ground cover here in the winds uh, they'll eat uh, bark off a pine tree they'll eat pine needles and stuff so we can take them into different areas where uh, other types of livestock uh, might not be able to make it the llamas originally came from South America though the uh, original species of llama 10 million years ago uh, were from North America, and then they split off. Uh, the ones that went over the Bering Strait are now uh, the camels that you'd find in Asia, uh, and then the ones that went down South America are the guanaco, is one of the species and stuff, and the, and the natives down there basically uh, did some breeding and came up with a llama here. When we pack a llama, uh, llamas are different in the fact that they have an exposed vertebrae, so we have to hang pan ears off the side of them. And what we have to do is we use a scale and we make sure that each side would get balanced evenly. The only thing we ever load on top of a llama might be a sleeping bag or a sleeping pad, something real lightweight that's not gonna bother them. On the sides, uh, the usual llama can carry about 35 to 40 pounds per side. Well, llamas are, are actually really friendly, very social animals. Uh, people have heard about the spitting thing. There's actually a bumper sticker in the llama industry called Spit Happens. Um, it's basically how they uh, express dominance over each other in their herd hierarchy. I've worked with them with, for two years now, and I've never had a problem. A lot of times what happens is some of, I don't want to say they're bad llamas, but get put in zoos and uh, maybe they're not very happy llamas there and they do get spit on so there's kind of a negative type thing, but uh, so it's something that uh, it gets kind of overplayed. Llamas do a lot of humming. Uh, it's kind of when they're happy. It's kind of when they're, they could be sad or uncomfortable about something like that and uh, uh, you want to hum? Hmm. Hmm. What are you getting, camera shot here or something, hot shot? You know, by the end of the week, we all knew that llama song, didn't we? Oh, man. We were licensed <laughs> llama wranglers by the end of the week. We can saddle them. We can pack them. We can get them over rivers. We're ready to check out a llama and just go now. So you I, especially, I think, Tom. You, oh, had a, you are Mr. I'm, Panier. I am Mr. Panier. That's what they call me, unfortunately. <laughs>